All right, so this video is for my INTC 1291 or test equipment course at Brass's Port College. This video is going to be covering the Fluke 744 documenting process calibrator. We do have earlier models like this one here, it's 743. You can see that the only difference here is really the, this has heart functionality, whereas this is just where you can set your range values. Fluke did come out with a, a newer model called the 754, which has replaced this. Although we continue to use these for our courses, so we want to make sure you get comfortable with using it. All right, so this first video is just going to cover uh, what we covered in the previous class, which was the basic functions of the buttons, the ports on the side, the back, and just give you an overall description of the meter. All right, so the obvious is the power button. Right. I'm going to let you know right now I am running this on an AC adapter. Right. Keep in mind the AC adapter is not going to be used to charge the battery which goes in this slot. I'll go ahead and pull that out. Show you the battery. Here's your battery. These get charged in a separate charger, an external charger. Pretty hefty battery, it lasts pretty good, and you're, you're going to know why that's a good thing later. Put that battery back in. However, for the purposes of these videos, I'm going to leave it connected to an AC adapter, which plugs into, if I take this out, you'll see, goes into the very top jack. So again, I'm going to press and hold the power button. You can see it's going to boot up. And here it goes straight to a measure screen. It's a little off, but it, it's, it's not enough to worry about. We haven't sent these things out to be calibrated in a while. Um, but I do want to go through the individual functions. If you can notice, I'm, I'll go ahead and start with this measure and source button. Right? If you notice, right now the screen says measure. And if I press this button one time, it swaps to source. And if I press it a third time, or a second time, I should say, we got measure up top and source at bottom. And here's hitting it the third time to go back to measure. I'll be covering how we, we use all of that in separate videos for measuring source. I just want to go through all the, the functions of the buttons. Okay. So this one should look familiar, milliamps. It's going to have to line up in conjunction with whether I'm measuring or sourcing, but I'm going to hit the milliamp button. Okay. Milliamps, we can source current. Okay. I'm going to save this setup button for later. Volts DC. Right? And if you look, you can v, the V for volts, and you remember the symbol for your standard fluke symbols for DC voltage. You have the solid line with the dashed line. I can source DC voltage. I can source AC voltage. Now, now I'm not going to source AC voltage that's going to power an appliance with this thing. Okay, it's when I press it. It right now I'm just measuring, right? But showing you I can measure that. If I hit it again, it's going to go to the second function, which is Hertz, which is for measuring frequency. And I got to tell it what, what the frequency is: is uh, greater than or equal to 20 hertz or less than or equal to 20 hertz. I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to hit the clear button. Let's go ahead and point out the function of that. It's kind of like your back button. I can measure and source resistance. And if you remember from the Fluke multimeter, right, resistance and continuity go hand in hand. Continuity is still pretty much a resistance check, but it gives you an audible. And it changes the reading on the screen whether you got an open or a close. Uh, and then we have this button, the thermocouple slash RTD button, which hopefully... Y'all are aware of what thermocouple or TC being thermocouple and RTD being resist, resistance temperature detector. Those are our two main types of temperature element sensors. And we can either measure or source those. We use this to calibrate our uh, temperature sensors. This button here is for pressure, which again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this when we get into my next videos. We're going to show you everything about how we source and then everything about how we measure 
and when I get to, to this button, just know that this symbol is what they use for pressure. Now, obviously, you've seen me use the clear button already, but th this is a good way. So say I type in, say I wanna, if I just go to source, select function DC voltage. Oh, I'm at 1.2, right? Well, I can use the arrow keys to go back one, or I can hit the clear button to clear it all out, right? This is also a zero button, which is going to coincide with pressure. And when we get to showing you the measuring pressure, you're going to see me use this button with that. All right, next thing is, obviously, you have your number key. You, you've already seen me use it. I think this is pretty much self-explanatory. When you have the option to punch a number in, here's your numbers. You can use negative, your negative and positive button. Here's your decimal 0, 1, 2, 3 through 9, right? All 10 decimals or all 10 digits. We have our enter key. So you notice when I, if, if I say I want to source 12 volts, I still have a cursor. That means it's not actually sourcing 12 volts right now. I have to actually hit enter, and once I do, you're going to see... It changed. Right? I've hit enter. Now, if I hit clear here, it's going to go to question mark. It should stop putting putting out voltage. I'm going to go ahead and hit zero though. Arrow keys are for stepping through menus. Okay. These blue keys associate to what's right at the bottom of the screen, right above it. So this blue key right now would be for changing my scale or my units. If I want to do that, I can go in here, and you can hopefully see, and then I can use my arrow keys to navigate through the menu. Right. If I go to more choices, you can see that the functions here change, so that changes what these buttons do. But again, arrow keys for navigating up, down, left, right if you have to go through the menus. And enter keys for submitting it to make it actually happen. We're going to move down to the bottom real quick, which is our six main ports here, or jacks. Now, I want you to pay close attention that take a mental division of what's here in the middle and go left. The middle and on the left, you notice has red text next to it and red is for source as it labels it and then everything the middle included and over here is what we can use to hook up to measure and what we want to measure if I want to measure voltage I'm going to measure here and here I want to use these two um, ports to plug my leads into to measure my voltage if I want to measure resistance right, I look for black and I look for the ohm symbol I'm going to plug into these two now, if I wanted to source resistance, I'd have to go over here. Source is red. I'm going to source resistance or RTDs. Sourcing voltage is over here. And then sourcing current is here. And then you also see, as we talked about the thermocouple and the RTD, this, these, or this port here, or this, what we could call a thermocouple port, right? This is where we're going to plug in a thermocouple extension which you're going to be getting familiar with in our labs and you do notice that one of the one of these is fatter than the other and it's the same shape here because thermocouples have polarity one wire is negative one wire is positive I'm just showing you where they all plug in right. we're going to look at the side of this again I've already pointed out the power jack this right here is going to be what's used in conjunction with our our pressure, which you need an external pressure module. In this case, we have the Fluke 750P05, and it has a range of 30 psi. Right? If you look in here, good. See, there's five pins in there. If you look on the side, if I rotate this around, see it's got a a red dot, and it's keyed. Right? These pins need to go in a very specific direction. It does not screw in, doesn't unscrew. Right? You quite literally, if you look, this sleeve, get the camera to focus, slides. 
and that's what unlocks it locks it and unlocks it right so if I, if I wanted to put that into the side I make sure that my red dot on the sleeve lines up with the red dot which is you see the red dot on the top and I would just here I can just plug it in but notice it won't come out and a lot of people because it won't come out just pulling on it they'll try to twist it off do not twist these reach in there grab that sleeve and you slide it slide the sleeve back and it'll come right out I will be showing you the use of this when we get into actually measuring pressure later and of course the last thing to look at it looks very similar to like an old uh, PC monitor serial port okay. this is where we plug an, another accessory for the Fluke 744 It's going to be a cable with just two alligator clips at the end. And this is what you need to plug into the Fluke to use this as a communicator. It will communicate to most smart transmitters. And I'll actually demonstrate the use of that later. See if I'm forgetting anything here. All right. Uh, oh yeah, brightness button. Right. I can click the brightness, turn to tur increase the brightness, turn it on, or basically turn more back screen on or not. Right? Um, that's pretty much the basics of the 744. The buttons, the function, what they do, or telling you what they are, and a basic description of how they work. The ports. You have your source, your measure. Red ports on on top being positive. Black ports on bottom being negative, or your common. Right, thermal couple, and then your ports on the side.